We are the Elrod family. We absolutely love to travel, and this time our travel adventure is taking us on an Alaskan cruise. We start our journey in Vancouver, Canada, and we make our way onto the Princess Cruise and then get to explore Ketchikan before turning around and heading back to Seattle. So come along and do not forget to subscribe because you're not going to want to miss all of the amazing fun that we're going to have. Every evening, you're given a paper that shows what the events are for the next day. This showed the time that we would be getting off the ship, so we got up early to have some coffee or tea for mom, and then headed down to breakfast before we went off the ship to catch a can. Getting off the ship was actually really easy. We just walked to the gangway and they showed us where we get off at and let us know what time to get back on. Okay, we've arrived in Ketchikan and we got off the ship after having a nice breakfast. Um, we, it was kind of nice having the place where you could see off the balcony to be able to watch the ship pull into the port gorgeous views this morning and gorgeous sunrise so now we're waiting for our excursion we're gonna go do the best to catch can where we see the totem poles the cannery and have some seafood sampler after that we'll go do a little shopping have some lunch and then head over to the lumberjack show i think that me and mom are most excited about the lumberjacks for sure <laughs> So it's really cold and pretty here. And Glad. the sky is clear. It's clear, gorgeous. The sun is shining. Couldn't ask for a better day. So we're very, very lucky. Getting met up with our excursion was a little bit of a chore. They told us just to meet on the pier, which we had been sitting at. And then finally, I went to go ask a second time and they said, oh, We've been looking for you because y'all are about to leave and we had no idea where we were even supposed to meet them. We never saw anybody with the sign or knew where to go at all. The pier was really big so we were just sitting on a bench waiting and that's already after I had asked somebody where we go and they said just to wait until our excursion time. So that's what we did. Anyways, all was good. We finally got on board and everything was fine and we had a wonderful time. I really think this is one of the best excursions that you could even go on because we saw tons of wildlife, bald eagles, tons of whales and sea lions, everything you can think of. It was amazing.
lady that's doing our tour, she said that the, this island that's over here, the eighth graders take a survival field trip that live in Ketchikan and they drop them off for a few days so they can survive, but they have a chaperone and everything. Um, her joke was that it's not like Lord of the Flies, so. <laughs> um, I think that's actually really cool. Like maybe everybody should do a survival class in eighth grade. I think that's great. Here it's really important though because they have such remote places and islands and they want everybody to know how to not die in the wilderness, so. <laughs> Very neat. Holy crap. Yep. <sighs> I'm like, yeah, am I recording still? Oh, our boat over to the Uh, my name is Eric. I'm from Utah originally. I've lived in Alaska for about three years now. No matter how hard my mom makes me feel guilty for not being at home, I stay out here. I love it. I live out here with my girlfriend, Max. She is uh, currently getting some food ready for us. <laughs> uh, but a little bit about today. We're going to first have some food. We have salmon chowder, salmon dip, cheese, crackers, a chicken skewer. We have some Alaska brewed beer. And we have some sodas as well. We do have some Alaskan root sodas, uh, the blue bag cream soda and the root beer. And then we're gonna, we're gonna have about 15 minutes to eat. Then we're gonna explore some of the rooms, talk about the history of canned salmon. Then we're gonna walk through the cannery community, walk through the Tongass forest over to the parking lot over there where there'll be a bus ready to take you to your next spot. I honestly had no idea what to expect when we heard that we were coming to a historic cannery to try some appetizers and do a tour. I usually like history and I'm definitely a foodie so I thought that it would be interesting but again I had no idea what it was going to be like. Alright, let's see. Try my Alaskan beer. It's super chocolatey. Tastes like you're drinking chocolate. 
The beer that I had is the 49th State Brewing Company Campfire Stout, and I'm definitely going to have to try to find it down here in Texas because it was delicious. It went perfectly on that cold morning with the amazing salmon chowder and the chicken skewer. Everything was really, really good. I was pleasantly surprised. But once they were ready, they're gonna open up a little door at the bottom, push the salmon into another conveyor belt, and it's gonna be brought out to the canyon floor. Now, when the cannery was actually open, these machines would have been in the warehouse next to us. And After having our appetizers, we went next door and got a very in-depth tour of the historic cannery. This is no longer in production, but it was really interesting to see exactly how the canned salmon worked and where everybody lived, how exactly they did all of the production and the machines were made. We even got to see some cans that were still full of salmon and were still sitting there from 1958 when the factory closed down. So nobody else wanted to touch it, but I was like, oh, let me see that. I need to get some video of that. This dive fisherman has lead-weighted shoes, lead-weighted belts, and a lead-weighted helmet on. Uh, they're gonna put a breathing apparatus going. Okay, let's see how. <laughs> you wanna put it on? Oh, she left me. Let's put it on our head. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> that is very, very heavy. I would break my neck. One of the most interesting and the saddest parts that we learned about was the difference and the segregation of the Filipino, Chinese, and Native people of Alaska that worked at the cannery. He even showed us this poem that was published by a Filipino woman that was just talking about all of the difficult times that they had. So we're checking out um, the outside of the cannery now. Um, our guide actually lives in this cute little house right here and um, him and his girlfriend stay there and host the tours. This house right here was the Filipino women's house that they would um, live in. And behind me here is the um, ruins of the white man's dining hall that burned down from them smoking. Down below, we actually can see the salmon, but they're mostly all dead. There is one that is still kicking, but um, we're going to take a walk up here into the woods and mom's hoping to see a bear. I personally am not. <laughs> I'm kind of scared of the bears. Just the idea of them kind of freaks me out. So I'm like, oh, what was that? What's that noise? <laughs> no, it's really beautiful here. Oh my gosh, these trees are gorgeous just fantastic. We're really enjoying this. On a longer springboard. Now they would uh, they would cut trees down just above the root system because a little easy. I would just love to stay here except again the bears. <laughs> <laughs> in Big Bend, we're afraid of bears and mountain lions. Here, we're afraid of bears. Maybe moose, too. I heard there's some moose in Alaska. Yeah. Now we're going across this bridge here. Okay.
wait to go on a little bus ride <laughs> to the next place. And I will say I liked that soup a lot. I really wish I knew what was in it. We should have asked him what was in it. I'll figure it out on my own. <laughs> Our last stop was the native Saxman village. This was an amazing stop because we got to see the actual studio where they are carving brand new totem poles. And we got to see some of the oldest ones that are still in perfect condition laying where they fell. Since it's a tradition that whenever a totem pole falls, they go back into the earth. Most of the time they leave them where they are lying. These particular totem poles are some of the oldest ones that are still standing and the most that you can see still standing in Alaska. And each of them have an amazing story attached to them. So this is the native Saxon village and every single pole here and color and everything tells a story of the native people that still live here today. Some tribes are gone, others are still around and still take care of this beautiful place. It's really amazing. They told us all kinds of stories about each pole. And I think my favorite one is this one. It's a shame pole. The man that originally bought or facilitated buying Alaska from Russia. He um, was thrown a big party where they basically give you gifts expecting that you will reciprocate the party and the gifts and return the gifts so you don't really keep them. Well, he either didn't know or didn't care and he decided to keep them. So they carved a pole, a shame pole with him on it and on his hat it has four different uh, little bands to represent the four parties that he was thrown where he kept all of the items that were given to him and uh to this day it's still there <laughs> they said that apparently his family came and asked if you know how much it would cost to be taken down and they said 1.6 million dollars so yeah i don't think that's gonna happen it's still there there it is there's also this pole next to it. The clan is gone, so they don't know the story of that pole. <clears throat> it's really interesting. I am think I'm gonna go and check out the gift shop now, but all of the proceeds at the gift shop still go towards the clan. So definitely wanna support these amazing native people, indigenous people here. Once our tour was completed, we dropped ourselves off over on Creek Street. This is one of the most popular places that tourists will visit in Ketchikan. There is so much amazing history attached to it. This place was famous for being the red light district and you can see lots of little nods to that historical fact. Most people suggested to go in here to Dolly's house, but since it was a $10 tour, we decided to skip it and just wander along the little paths. It was kind of neat to just pop in and out of a bunch of shops that were located along Creek Street. We also really enjoyed watching the salmon. It's basically the end of their spawn since it is the end of September, but we still saw some. We then had lunch at the very busy but delicious fish house before heading over to the Lumberjack Show. Okay, we're at mom's favorite thing, the great Alaskan Lumberjack Show. <laughs> She's been looking forward to seeing all the lumberjacks all day long. 
for this months. They look bigger than those two. <laughs> She wants a big barley man. So this show is kind of fun. Um, it does have a like a historical background. This used to be the largest spruce mill in this area. So, um, but now it's just for shows. So there's a whole crowd of people waiting to see some guys create some mayhem. There's apparently two teams. We have Canada against the U.S. So we're part of the U.S. They're part of Canada. So good thing we sat here. <laughs> cheesy but we actually really enjoyed it and it took a lot of skill you could tell just to be able to compete in these activities after the lumberjack show was done we headed back over to the ship to rest our very tired feet and have dinner before it was time to head to bed again we somehow were not even tired of seafood yet because for dinner we chose to have even more delicious seafood. For dessert, I decided to try the baked Alaska, which I have never had before, but when in Rome. Stay tuned and subscribe to our channel to catch all the vlogs from our five-day cruise, where we give all of the tips, tricks, and comparisons to our two Disney cruises. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss a moment of our amazing Alaskan cruise adventure. See you in our next video.